Brushes, books, and tomatoes is the still life I recently painted. First, uh, let me start with the studio setup. I have a natural north facing light. The position of the easel was side by side with the object that I wanted to paint. And I had the sketch on view. This is needed especially for the beginning of the painting. Uh, the composition that I created was basically looking at objects that had complementary colors. The color contrast is important and I really liked, I went around the house to see which uh, color could contrast very nicely with these red tomatoes. And I also placed my sketchbooks, as you can see, some of them I haven't opened them yet. And, you know, with three different colors. Uh, the sketchbook that I'm actually using for my sketch is yellow. It would have been nice, but I did have to have that open. So I, I use the other three, the blue, the green, and the red. I had to place a dark drape draper in the background so that I could not be distracted and also it would bring the color contrast uh, in the composition in a better way than not having that black uh, background. I mean, it's not completely black, it's grayish, dark, but it did provide a good idea for the contrast. So in my first sketch, uh, as you can see, I placed the objects. Uh, it's almost a Noten uh, sketch, and I wanted to make sure that I was paying attention to the perspective, how I was seeing it. So in the photo, you see it from uh, not from my eye level, it's a little bit lower. So when I was standing by the side of the easel, in front of the easel, this is the perspective that I was having and this is the perspective that I wanted to paint. So look at the amount of table I, I would see and also uh, the perspective of the vase and the tomatoes and books. I created this painting using water-soluble oils. I use Artisan Windsor Newton linseed oil as needed when the paints need to be a bit more fluid and more buttery. For the colors, I used the Lucas Berlin 20 ml set. This set comes with titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow hue, yellow ochre, vermilion hue, alizarin crimson hue, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, viridian hue, and burnt umber. I used a clear palette, it's vinyl plastic palette, and for oil painting, uh, the palette knife is very useful for mixing, although it's a painting knife, uh, I rarely use it for painting. I also used it for scraping off paint, and the bristle brushes that I used were anywhere from a very large size to block uh, very large areas of the painting to size two flats. Basically, I use more of the flats than filberts. And one thing I realized is that with oil paints, you need to have several of the same size because you're keeping your dark brushes and your light brushes and sometimes even color, you know, the greens, you don't want to mix them with the reds. Uh, this doesn't happen in acrylic painting because you clean the brushes every time you change color. Uh, but with oils, you can keep the brushes with the paint. So you need a lot of the same. To make this painting, I used a stretched cotton canvas. It's 11 by 14 inches. And what I do is when I have leftover paints and I did some oil painting earlier this year, what I do is I use the leftover paints to tone canvases. Uh, so they're toned, this is water soluble oil, so they're basically washes with, with water. And I chose the one that had the warmest background color, sort of a yellow ochre with a little bit of reds. So the step, the first step in the painting is the block in of the shapes. And you use your reference, at least I use my reference sketch, uh, more than actually looking at the painting, although I had it right there, the sketch is very, very useful to block in the large shapes. So first is placing the large shapes, and it's almost a note and um, idea, same as the sketch. So the shapes I had, making it simple, are basically three 
trapezoids. As you can see, the vase, uh, the books and tomatoes, and the drapery with the table are three similar shapes. And I wanted to make sure that I, that I position them. Two of them would be like negative uh, shapes in this case, because I left them not painted, just outline them. And the largest, darker shape is going to be all one. It's the table and the drapery. So for this step, it's basically a tonal composition. You don't see local colors there yet. And for this step, I used a laser and crimson, ultramarine blue, viridian helium, burnt umber. These are the dark, transparent colors from the Berlin Lucas set that I have. These are used only basically with water because they're water soluble. There's no linseed oil yet. I will tell you when I introduced just a little bit of a linseed oil. Uh, this painting was done, it basically was wet and wet, um, although it took me several days. So on the second step, what I did was introduce the local colors. So you start seeing there now, it's uh, no longer just the tonal values, but the local color green and a bit of red. And basically, I wanted to define what was my lightest light and the darkest dark. The lightest light is the vase. And for that, I introduced lemon yellow and cerulean blue. The darks were still continued to use the alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, viridian hue, and burnt umber. Those are the same four darks used all throughout the painting. And I will be introducing colors slowly. I refrained from using white, and you will see, for the very first steps, I was just using colors to bring the lights and avoiding white for now until I had to use it for the accents. So at this point, I had to stop. Uh, I literally had to stop. Something was not working right. I was looking at the sketch and also at my uh, setting and I have no idea why I did the wrong perspective and the wrong placing. So I had to redraw the vase and I had to also make sure that I didn't have as much empty space on the bottom right. Not only the sketch had very little of the edge of the table, but actually I realized that when I was looking at the actual still life in my studio, I prefer not to see the table at all and have a little bit more of the books and the um, vase showing in, in more of a perspective from the top. So I had to make sure I redrew, redrew all this. And because the paint was still wet, I was able to use the knife to scrape out uh, the edges where I had to redraw it. So with oil paints, you can move things, you can change them. Uh, sometimes it's the earlier you do this, the better, but errors are made almost by, you know, everyone can make a mistake and you can always correct them. But again, it's always good to take a look and say what is not working and what is working at every step. So now you can see uh, the difference uh, when I re-sketched uh, and you can see the scraping of the areas that I was doing. So first thing, you know, the vase, of course, now it's the right size, the right position and the right perspective. The triangle on the right, I just completely got rid of it. I just wanted to do like a loose edge. And of course, in the area of the tomatoes and the books, with the knife, I was able to scrape out and uh, reestablish where they should be going. So in here, I wanted to make sure that I could place some contrast and colors on the shape. So I started introducing the vermilion hue, which I had not used until now. And of course, I couldn't hold myself from starting to use it because that was a key element uh, in contrast with the lemon yellow and cerulean blue of the vase. So I wanted to start seeing how that 
color contrast was playing. The darks are the same throughout the painting. On step four, Working on the whole canvas, I was paying a lot of attention now to a little bit more details and local color. On the drapery, I worked a bit more on the drapery and also on the background light. I wanted to make sure that was uh, maintaining the warmth color of the original canvas uh, tone. But I also wanted to reshape and introduce some of the colors that were important. So for the blue and the red of the books, as well as a little bit on the dish, I had to now use the titanium white, same as the drapery. So titanium white was introduced at this step. The accents were basically with the vermilion hue. And the lights, again, lemon yellow, cerulean blue, the darks, the same four dark colors. So I started experimenting with some reflection of colors. I have to confess I did not see that on the drapery, not even in the studio, but I was trying to use all the colors in different mixes uh, in the drapery. So when I was looking at an area that was lighter, I was using colors, not just white, and darker, I was using a lot of the colors. And I just smudged a little bit of the red in that area of the curtain, but I did not like it. I thought it was too distracting. I thought the red of the tomatoes had to be predominantly in contrast with the green base. Even the red of the book should not be that uh, eye-catching. So I wanted to make sure that I did not distract the view with that smudge of red in the drapery in the back. I got rid of it. I had to make sure that the focal point was the vase and the tomatoes and that the rest serves to bring them to life. So I got rid of that red. And the accents, again, were basically the vermilion hue. Again, the lights had now the white, lemon yellow, and cerulean blue. Uh, in some of the areas in the vase is basically lemon yellow with a little bit of white. In the tomatoes, I uh, started placing some of the lights and some of the shades, but not very well defined yet. And, and the books were a bit better defined this time. The darks, again, were the same darks. On this next step, I started using a bit more detail with color and brush strokes. So the brushes, um, what I did was basically just placing pieces of color. There's no blending. There's just basically vertical or dots with the different grays I actually had from the drapery. And I just put them, um, not really what I was seeing. Uh, I did see that there were some reflections, but I didn't want to go on realistic uh, depiction of these. I just wanted to give the impression of the ferrules and the brushes. Uh, on the drapery, I did work a lot more on the shapes and especially uh, the curling on the very right, uh, bottom right that I was seeing. And then the copper dish, basically, after placing the areas of the shadows and the lights, uh, the edge of this particular copper plate is a very well-known design. It's been used in silver, copper, and, and other metallic dishes. And I just wanted to give the impression with little dots of not really white, it's a, it's a bluish white in some areas in the shade, and it's a little bit more with uh, very light uh, orangey color. All of these colors were coming from the drapes that I had all of these uh, patches of different colors, and I was using them to create this impression of the copper edge. On the next step, I define the shapes a bit more. And what I wanted to show with this oval here is, although I did not like the bright red or the you know large red I had before, 
I did like to have some red. So I reintroduced the red in that area of the drapery. And I made the drapery around the vase very dark so that the vase would actually come to life. The red in the drapery, by the way, is much less notable, but it's a, a little bit of a shadow that was reflecting from the brushes. So I wanted to make sure that I could capture also a little bit of a lively drapery in the back without distracting. It sort of brings the view to the focal point, which are, you know, brushes, vase, and tomatoes in the copper plate. So it worked a bit more on the local colors, the reflections on the tomatoes and the copper dish. Um, I really liked the way this was going. I was using very thick paint and just smudges of application and lifting the brush so that I would not actually be mixing. This painting was done with almost no linseed oil, although in some cases I had to introduce a little bit of the linseed oil for the drapery, but the tomatoes are basically out of the tube, very thick paint. And the copper plate, I continued playing with darks and lights, just dot, 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 uh, not in the same place, so that it does look like there's some sort of a shape in there. I also worked a lot more on the shadows of the books and defined the pages. There's no pure white in here. Uh, and I was seeing some of the reflective, reflective colors and I was making sure that I could put the shades correctly as I was seeing them from the natural light so that they have a sense of volume. Uh, on the vase, I wanted to make sure that the... Uh, brushes I was painting on the top, at least you could have some sense of, you know, which ones were there and where were they in the vase. When you see a little bit of the translucent um, sticks of the brushes in the vase, uh, you know, it's, a, it's not a transparent vase, so only some of them were reflecting and only some of them I could see. So that's, that's what I was doing. And, you know, on the brushes, I wanted to use expressive brush strokes. This is where I did use a little bit of the titanium white pure in some of them at the edges. But I, you know, I did not want to, again, make, make a very clear, distinctive, you know, hair by hair in the brushes. The final painting had a little bit less of the brush strokes in the uh, brushes, uh, a little bit of the definition on the tomato vine, which were the two connected with some reflective lights. And it's uh, the final painting was painted by me in 2019. And, you know, looking at the photo that I had taken originally, I actually think my tomatoes look much more appealing. And I'm going to have a nice tomato salad after this painting. Thank you for watching.